We thank you, Jesus. We thank you, Lord. We ask you now, Lord, the Holy Ghost of God to pass between every few and touch every heart in this house, Lord. Lift up our God. We lift you up tonight, Lord God. We lift up
deserve it. But it's offered to us anyway. Why? Because it's grace and not works. Glory to God. Man, that'll make you happy right there. Yes, sir. That'll make you happy. Know that they've got a, a place. He's got a place for us. He's got a seat with your name on it, right? Yes, sir. Glory to God. I, made, I like the old Magruder's. Magruder's just sang that song about making that reservation. Glory. Hallelujah. Well, I don't know it. Y'all looking at me at the singing. I don't know. Hey, I can't sing it if I didn't know it. Glory to God. But all that was a good one. Glory to God. Man, I want to tell you, we went to the Alexandria Coliseum one night and saw Charles Johnson and the Revivers and the Magruders. Man, I don't want to tell you, anything had life ran in that house that night, boy. I want to tell you, they got so happy in there. There was another crew from a different denomination there. I don't guess they believed in shouting and running. They all got up and went. I guess they went to Burger King or somewhere. And just made them an available run. Yeah. Don't charge me for it. Charles Johnson got to singing about let's have church. Yeah. Yeah. Oh my God. Man, 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 do you, do you know that song I was telling about the Magruders? I made my reservation. The there it is. There it is. Y'all play a little bit of that. Right? I'm mean, ready to go home with yeah. Jesus. Yeah. tonight, brother so-and-so's got a special. So, okay, praise the Lord. So they went on beating and banging. They got, got, got done. Well, they called brother so-and-so up. And he had him a little case. He come up there with that little case and, and he opened that thing up and he had took out a, a, 
a, a bowstring, you know, that big bow, like a violin. Or, he said, oh, we're going to get down tonight, boy. Yes, indeed. And then he reached back in that case and he took out a handsaw. And the man just said, oh, dear God. He said that man sit down on a chair and he bent that handsaw all over and he went to strum in that handsaw with a, with a, he said, dear God in heaven. He said that was worse than any two cats could, could fight and make a noise. He said, I sit there and suffer through that. At the end of service, he said him and the pastor was eating supper. And he just said, he said, Reverend. He said, that was, I don't know about all, all that, that playing that, that, that hand song. He said, that pastor looked at me and said, I felt the Lord in it. Yeah. <laughs> The manager said, well, we was unequally yoked on that one right there. <laughs> Glory to God. We do. We so appreciate the people the Lord just sending this way. We just feel a big old family right here. Glory yes. to God. Yes. Amen. Amen. Now I was uh, praying this morning and kind of got through with the praying. The Lord really hadn't spoke to me, not said a whole lot as far as tonight. And, and Sunday night when I left here, I dropped my Bible in the parking lot, and everything just, it looked like a woman's purse. Everything just scattered everywhere. <laughs> Glory to God. And so I just kind of, you just stuck it all back in. So I, I, you know, I'm sitting there this morning, I got up from praying. I, I, I'm sitting there at the, at the table, and I'm, I'm just opening my Bible and, and putting everything kind of all to, back together again. Kind of like Humpty Dumpty, you know. And, I, and uh, I, I found a piece of paper that's folded in my Bible. I got about a hundred of them here like that. But, but I, I don't know, I opened this one up, and, and I said, hmm, it's a message. And I, it's a message I've preached here. But I said, that's strange for it to be in my Bible. Because when I, when I, my, my, my messages go back in my folder, and from my folder, I transfer them into my, my big folder. And, and I've, got a, I've got a stack, a bookcase that tall, and it's just loaded. And I just, that's, that's my treasure yes. chest. Yes. Come on. Yes, that's my trophy case. Come on, yes, some words from the Lord. A yes. Amen. Yes. And, but this one was in, so I said, well, and I, I opened it up. And, and some of you might remember this. It was entitled Life Changing Lessons mm -hmm. Around a Dried Up Brook. Mm -hmm. and, and the Lord spoke to me. I went to, I went to, to file it away. And the Lord spoke to me. He said, read it. And as I began to read this, I, I just kind of well opened. I said, my God, that was just so good, God. God said it's always good because it's my word. Yes, he yes. said, you preach that tonight. Amen. Thank you, Lord. Well, the first thing, the, you know, your, your mind, well, I don't know. I don't have a date, but I'll record sometimes when I preach and I'll write the day, you know, you know, and uh, it just kind of helps me keep everything filed away. But I guess tonight it don't matter if I preach it yesterday. First right. oh. Kings chapter 17. When I, Brother David and I begin just to reread it, then the Holy Ghost begin to speak to me and I begin to write some more. Mm -hmm. Glory to God. Life changing lessons around a dried up brook. First Kings chapter 17. Am I too hot out there? I had Brother John fix me. I can really hear myself good now. So are y'all good out there? Pray, praise the Lord. Amen. I appreciate the the, the, the uh, knowledge the, these guys has got. Yes. Sister T does all right, but a lot of times these guys know how to do all this stuff up here. Amen. Yes. And, and we sure appreciate everybody tonight. And and, I, and, I, and listen, you you there's some that should have been here tonight. There's no 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 ifs ands or buts about it. But y'all go home and, and to, you know who I'm talking about and encourage those that's not here. Man, you should have been here. Yes. Your answer. Is in the house of God. Yes. Yes. Come on, come on, church. Yes. Your 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 battle is going to be won at an altar. Yes. Yes, sir. Come on. So so always remember, you know, if, if you if you if you mm, I I, I want to go, but I don't know if I can go in this and that and the other. Just go ahead and make yourself. Yes. Just yes. push your soul yes. body to go. Lord, so good to see Brother Larry and Sister Weeksy yes. going on yes. week yes. service. Yes. Glory yes. to God. Yes. And uh, we're just going to believe the Lord, Amen, for the body of Christ and. Uh, and uh, uh, 1 Kings 17 and, and 1 tonight. And Elisha, the Tishbite, who was of the inhabitants of Gilead, said unto Ahab, As the Lord God Israel liveth, before whom I stand, and there 
There shall not be dew nor rain these years, but according to my word. And the word of the Lord came unto him, saying, Get thee hence, turn thee eastward. Help me with this next part. And hide thyself by the brook Cherith, that is before Jordan. And it shall be that thou shalt drink of the brook, and I have commanded the ravens to feed thee there. So he went and did according unto the word of the Lord. I said, so he went and he did what God told him to do. Yes. For he went and dwelt by the brook Cherith, that is before the Jordan River, Jordan. And the ravens brought him bread and flesh in the morning and bread and flesh in the evening. And he drank of the brook. And it came to pass after a while that the brook dried up because there had been no rain in the land. Father, we love you tonight. We give you praise for this opportunity just to break the bread of life tonight now. I ask you, God, just hide me. Hide me, God, that we only see in here your presence. God, again, we thank you for all you're doing. Touch each and every one that's here. God, touch these small children. Touch, touch them babies, Lord, that's sick tonight. God, touch our children, Lord. Touch the generation, Father God, we pray, Lord. Oh, God, there's, there's an evil that's crept upon this land now. God, we ask you for your protection. We thank you for all that you're doing. All that you're going to continue to do. We give you praise and glory. In Jesus' wonderful name. Church, say amen. amen. I believe that's pleasing to the Lord. We all begin to pray together like that. I believe God, I, God longs to hear His people pray. In unity and a, and, a, and, a, and a oneness. This is no... This is not a per se sermon or, 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 or text that you've not heard. We, we, we go back here. We reference this in, even from other messages. This is a well rehearsed story here that we find in 1 Kings. Elijah was God's voice. You see, not only was Elijah God's man, he was God's voice. Yes, sir. When, let me tell you. He's not arrogant when he tells the wicked king Ahab that because it's not going to rain because basically I say it. He's not arrogant. He's not conceited. But at this particular place in history, he is the voice of God Almighty. We as a body of Christ, the believers of the Lord tonight, amen, we are the mouthpiece as the Spirit of God that governs you, and listen, if the Spirit of God can't govern you, He just marks you a rebel or rebellious and He won't use you. Come on. Yeah. But with the Spirit of God, amen, governs you and I. He leads our steps. That's why the Bible said we're to walk by the Spirit and we won't fulfill the lust of the flesh. And as we're led by the Spirit of God, there's times that God opens a, a, a great effectual door that we can walk through and we can speak thus saith the Lord. Yeah. Elijah's not been on the scene. He, he's come basically from nowhere. God knew him from before he was in the, in the mother's womb. But all of a sudden he's introduced now huh, into a time of ministry. Huh. Now why? It seems like it, it, for some it's a younger age. For others it's an older age. Huh. But how many knows whatever age it is, God's time is the right time. Can you say amen? Amen. And we find him now, we, we find him that he's speaking for the Lord. He's talking the most ruthless. I said he's face to face with the most ruthless king uh, and, the, and the king's wife that's ever been. They're murderers. They, they're idolaters. They're, they're haters of God. Amen. Uh, and and it's, it's Elijah's duty now. 
to fulfill the command of God to just stand before him uh, and, and after he stands before him and pronounces, and pronounces the judgment uh, uh, there's not going to be any rain there's a, a mighty famine coming God then says I want you to hide yourself uh, by this brook Cherith uh, now the word Cherith if you've been in any of my teachings uh, it's the Hebrew word simply means in translation it's a cutting uh, it's a covenant glory to God uh, I believe there's been a cutting uh, 2,000 something years ago uh, on, a, on Calvary's tree uh, where the covenant of the New Testament church uh, by the blood of Jesus, amen, uh, brings us into covenant uh, with the Lord Jesus himself now uh, that we can abide in him. Glory to God. Uh, and the Lord even says, uh, as you abide in me, it's almost like a branch uh, that abides on the vine. Amen. Uh, and if the branch will abide on the vine, uh, there's always going to be a fruit that it'll produce, friend. Uh, I believe we're living in the times, Brother Chris, uh, that we uh, we must be about the Lord's business. Uh, we must be uh, what we must be. We've been summonsed. Uh, we've been called. Uh, now it's time to go to work. Come on. Uh, it's time to be. Uh, and I'm not talking about staying so occupied and so busy uh, that your head's just spinning around. It's simply sometimes the best thing you can do is sit down and hear the word of the Lord. Amen. The Bible said the 120 was all in one mind and one accord. They were sitting. Come on, somebody. Yes, when the promise come. There was four things, amen, that God had given me. And uh, to pertain to this story, we're going to go back through them four things, but there are some things that God showed me this morning and just ministered to my heart. Amen. I love to minister the Word of God, but I love it just as much where the Lord ministers to me. Come on, sir. I mean, because if you don't feed me, I can't feed y'all. Come on. All I can do then is regurgitate something that we, that the, oh my God, that and, and God help us if we get like that, just regurgitate something we've heard from somebody else now. What we hear from other people, it's ours to use. Glory to God. Come on. It's the, we don't have a patent on this. There ain't, there ain't not one piece of, uh, there ain't one word in any message that I would say. Oh, glory to God. I freely, amen. Go home, copy it if you need it, you know. Uh, but, but I want to tell you, there's a lot of pimps in the pulpit. It's, uh, that's prostituted this gospel. They they do this. They sell that. you got to sow this in. I'll, but that's another message another time. I'm going to stay focused uh, with just four simple life-changing lessons around a drying up brook. It's, it's drying up now. Because God said it was going to be like that because there's no rain in the land. Yes, sir. The first thing in verses 3 to 5, we'll reread them. Get thee hence and turn thee eastward and hide thyself. By the brook Cherith, that is before Jordan, and it shall be that thou shalt drink of the brook. And, and I have commanded the, the ravens to feed thee there. So he went, and he did according unto the word of the Lord. For he went and dwelt by the brook Cherith, that is before Jordan. Amen. The first thing I want us to learn tonight, amen, is that we must learn the art of of taking one step at a time. Amen. We must learn. There's an art to this. Everybody wants to run for Jesus. We sing about running for Jesus. Come on. We sing about building for Jesus. It's all, and that's all wonderful. Amen. But you can't let a babe, amen, cannot run until he first knows how to walk. I mean, now maybe y'all got maybe y'all got a child or, or, or you know somebody got a child that they went from the crib, amen. Uh, put them on a put them on the floor and, 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 and you know they usually roll around a little bit and, uh, and then they learn to pull up, crawl a little bit and after a while you know they'll take off, amen. Maybe y'all got a child somewhere that as you throw them on the put them on the floor, amen, on a blanket to to, to, to look at them and they just jumped up and run off. No, 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 it don't work like that, does it? Uh, oh my. We got a special child. Amen. Oh, my God. This child will going to make us a lot of money. This is one of a kind. Amen. No, it's using the principle of the Lord. Amen. That when these children are birthed, they're so dependent. Oh, come on. On a, on a, up, on a keep of the mother divine grace and, and the motherly love. Amen. That papa's right there to become a bear. He's a protector now. Not only of mama, but a baby now. Amen. There's, a, there's an order there. 
there in God's, in God's uh, uh, way. Uh, it's always been in order. Uh, but that child, amen, uh, begins slowly but surely. Uh, it's, it, it's developing. Uh, it's maturing. Uh, that one day it is going to pull up. Uh, one day it's going to take its first step. My God. Oh, we may not only ask good Facebook stuff right there. When baby takes the first. It's even better when baby's first word is dad dad. <laughs> I told mine now the best the best word could be was paw paw. And we heard Papa before we heard Momo. Glory, glory to God. But I want to tell you, you see, we get so busy sometimes uh, that we forget that we're supposed to pace ourselves. Uh, we just take one step at a time. A amen. Uh, oh, hallelujah. Why? God did not allow Elijah any extra surplus there. Uh, amen. He had him. He had him moving slow. And when he gets him where he wants him, he's going to set him down. Uh, now, not only is he set down, he's here. Oh, just listen, friend. If we're going to do anything in the public for God, we first got to be hid in God. Oh, I, I, I read, I read a, a thing one time about this man. He was able to, in a rainbow trout, in these real crystal clear streams. There was a guy been fishing all morning. He ain't caught nothing. Well, that old man, he come down there. He had his little plastic, his little box. He had his fly rod. Amen. And he went down to... He spoke to the young man. The young man spoke to him. It was less than an hour. Glory to God. He comes back and, and there's, there's rainbow trap tails hanging out of that little basket. Amen. Oh my God. That little that young boy said, Whoa, Pops, wait a minute. What in the name of the... How did you catch all that fish? He said, It's simple, son. He said, he said You've got to hide yourself. He said, you don't just bust up in there and start fishing and all that. He said, you got to stay out of sight. Yes. Come on, somebody. And that's the same way, the same way with the Lord was we got th this generation don't need to see us. Right. Amen. Yes, sir. They don't need to just hear us. They need to hear, thus saith the Lord. Yes. I believe God still raising up prophets in the yes. church. Come yes, on, somebody. Yes. That, and listen, I believe we all prophesied yes. something or another every time we open our mouth. Uh, but it's time that we can look at that need uh, of that lost one, that bound one, that afflicted one, uh, that tortured one, that, that one that's lost hope. Uh, they lost their vision. Dear God, they got 20-20 eyesight, uh, but they got no vision. Yes. Glory to God. Uh, it's time that we become now an instrument of the Lord. It's time that we can bring hope, but not in our own self, not in the pedigrees of this world, but in the Lord Jesus Christ. How many know there's still hope? Amen. So you've got to listen. You must learn the art, and it is an art of taking one step at a time to pace yourself. He said bread and flesh in the morning. And again, bread and flesh in the evening. God did the same thing in Moses' day with the manna. One time a day. He said, there's no use you going back out. There's nothing going to be there. Come, come on. Amen. It's the one time a day. And then on the, on the Sabbath, on the day of rest, that day the before, I'm going to bless you double. Amen. So you get it. It's, it's going to be fine. I know the refrigeration system wasn't the best back then, but God made a way. It wasn't going to, we wasn't going to breed worms and stink. Amen. Unless they hoarded it up. Yes, come on. Yes. Boy, that's amazing. That, I read, every time I read it, I just get amazed at that. Yes. Yes. I'm going to tell you, they got one more wafer than they needed. And God's infinite wisdom knew exactly how many that family needed. Come on. Yeah, but we better get a few extra. You know how we are. You know when we, you pass through that Piccadilly line or something, and you see them good old buttered rolls right there. You, you, you know you can't eat three of them. You know your belly don't need three of them, but you're going to get them anyway. Glory to God. Man, I want to tell you, let me tell you, one of the hardest, the most horrible things in the eyes of God is that when somebody wastes something. Yes, sir. Hear me now. Hear me now. My daddy fought the Korean War, 17 years old. He lied about his age, joined the Navy. It was over there on, on the USS St. Paul. And, uh, and they went in ports before. And he said, oh, son. He said, I've watched men stomp the life out of other men fighting over the scraps that was rotted in a trash can. That's why he was all the pieces. He, he couldn't handle waste. He, he would just he would just he couldn't do it because he, he watched men kill each other over table scraps that flies was blowing. And I was a praying one night. 
When I first got saved, I was looking at the miracles. You know, and them, that bread and fish, Jesus had them pass it out. And he said, now, go get the 12 baskets. Yeah. Come on now. Yeah. Go, go get them fragments. Oh. Amen. Why? Because the Lord don't like waste. Yeah. Not only does he not like bread and, and, and come on now, and meat and, and food. That ain't the only waste he don't like. I tell you what else discourages, not discourages, but grieves his spirit. It's when God pours his spirit out on you and I here. When God gives you something, a call, a charge from heaven, and we go, come on somebody. I want to tell you, it's wasting the substance. God, the Lord said, I'm going to get three of y'all. I'm giving y'all something. The talents. Two of them made. Come on, they had it. The other one buried it in the ground. Come on. He's trying to, he conned it off like, oh Lord, we know you, you know, you, the way you are, we, 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 no, no, you didn't. You just didn't want to do nothing with it. Come on. That's right. I want to tell you, you will never know the sweetness of victory yes. till you learn Watch this. The success of defeat. Amen. You didn't get that. Yes, sir. The su success of defeat. So there's going to be some times we're going to just fall flat on our face. Yes. Come on. Yes. We'll fall flat on our face. Yes, but because we're doing it with the right spirit. Come on, somebody. Man, I want to tell you, I, I knocked on that door, glory to God, and, and the backside of Jonesboro, he's out there passing tracks and telling people about the Lord, and I just had a good old feeling. Go oh, about this, this place, I'm knocking on the door. I knocked on the door, and this guy slung that door open. He said, I don't care what you're selling, I don't care who you are, but in about that time, Butch or, or, or whoever he was, big old Dover Kitch with a big old thick collar, come right beside him, and he growled at me. He said, if you ain't off my property in just seconds, I'm going to turn him loose on you. My feeling and my feet. Come on, somebody. <laughs> I said, my feeling and my feet hit the road, Jack. Come on. Oh, yes, sir. But I tried. Glory to God. I've been spit in the face. I told you today I was introduced to a tire tool. Hey, come on. I've been cursed. Glory to God. I've been called all these for not crazy names. But what do you think? We're going to boo-hoo and cry and quit? No. Actually, just put your little stamina in your back home. Come on, somebody. Hey, I would never because you never know the next door, the next person you meet. Oh, glory to God. It ain't us to decide who's going to in and who's out. It's all. So I said, listen, pace yourself. Just pace yourself. Just pray. Every time you go somewhere, God, do you have somebody to, for me to speak to today? How many knows he'll, he'll, he'll set you right up? Come on. I ain't going to go back through the long story, but I, I, I've told this church before how the Lord took his hand on my buggy and slammed it into that, that other guy's buggy. Come on. Because I, come on somebody. I want to tell you, you see, because we pray to be used. We pray to be used. Come on. Here's Elijah now. Guess what? Elijah, that should be a good note right here. Elijah didn't get to choose what God wanted him to do. That's right. Come on now. So, so we must learn the art of taking one step at a time. Number two, this, the, the, the same verses, three through five. We must learn the importance of a hidden life. We must learn the importance of a hidden life. I want to tell you, friend, you know what's wrong with this world today? You know why there's so, the transgender and all that crazy, crazy mess is going on? God, God points at a church. Yes, Come on. Judgment first begins in the where? House of the Lord. Yes, sir. Come on. And so many churches has got so off kilter. Yes, sir. Listen, we don't hate nobody. We love we love the sinner. But you can't love that sin. Right. Come on, somebody. Yeah. And, and it sounds well, but but uh, you, you're going to just run. You know, you're gonna, listen, God will open doors at times and allow you to step through them. But you, that's why you've got to stay prayed up. Yes. Because if you're not prayed up, you'll be in the wrong spirit. Yes. You know we will. We'll put our things in into it. We put our two cents. Come on. We, we, we put two cents. We put about a dollar, dollar and a half in now. Come, come on. 
I mean, we, do, we clean out the piggy bank, put it in our opinions, come on, our way of thinking, our mentality, come on somebody. But if it's our mentality and, and our way of thinking, it's usually our words and not his, right? Come on now. So, so here's Elijah now. He, it's not going to rain. He's not fixing to change his mind. He tell, he, God tells him now, if you say what you, I told you to say, go and hide yourself. I'm just some of the greatest ministries in the world. A a amen. It's so, I, listen, I went to that senior dinner yesterday. There was an old friend there. He's been in a nursing home, had a stroke 12 years, I think it is now. But his mind's still short. And, and he was uh, and he was uh, telling me about, about Miss Sister Fanny Crosby. Brother Chad, you've probably heard that name before. Wrote hundreds, Brother John, hundreds and hundreds of gospel songs. Oh, man, some, some of the great, great song hymns that, that we sang, she wrote that. Amen. She lived to be 94 years old. She's blind from birth. Come on. She's, but, she, but Brother Irving was telling me, he said, but, but she never looked at her, her blindness as a disability. Glory to God. And, 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 and I think, I, 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 I think that's what I was having trouble hearing. But I think he said this. Glory to God. And if he didn't, I'll say it now. Blind all her life, wrote hundreds of gospel hymns, glory to God. That when she crossed over to the other side, she's going to have eyes now. And the first one she's going to see is the one she's been singing about for all her life, glory to God. Why? Because she was in a hidden life. She didn't use it. She didn't use that as just some kind of some kind of handicap that she couldn't do nothing. I told y'all about my blind guitar player that played for us in Jonesboro. Brother Jay Howell, uh, I want to tell you, friend, he never, he never, he never used that blindness as a handicap. Uh, he, he, he would the old out the old time the, the whales. You remember the outside whales? You know, had a little box on the side where sometimes fire ants would get them and short them out. Uh, he'd go out there and rewire them. Amen. One bidding, not the ant, the, the electricity bidding pretty hard. Uh, glory to God. One time, Sister Janice uh, bought her a new range top. Man, uh, oh yes, sir. Well, he he done, he done some cleaning while she went to work. Huh? And he was rubbing his hand on the front range. I don't know which, what brand it was, but it kind of had a, uh, it stuck out a little bit. Huh? And he felt that. He said, oh, Janice, I spilled some gravy on this thing. He reached there and he found him that Brillo pad. Huh? He got back up. He waited a little bit. got back there and started scrubbing. He said, man, this is a, this is a bad state. And this is a, some gravy that want to come off here. So he scrubbed and he scrubbed. Uh, he said, when, when Sister Janice come home, she screamed like a wild panther. <laughs> He might have scrubbed the whole front of the of her new range top off trying to get that gravy up. Come on, somebody. But he never sit down. He's a trucking dispatcher. He's got a mind that's so, oh my Lord. Uh, if you tell him uh, one time how to get the brew in, you'll never tell him again. And he'll remember wherever it curves at. Come on. Uh, why? Because he never looked at his handicap uh, as a handicap. Uh, he just uses it as an opportunity or maybe a tool. Dear God. Uh, we we even got saved. He come from an old bar room singing country music. Shot himself on accident. When he got saved, we don't know these things. And I want to tell you, he took that mountain and made it out of made a molehill. I mean, he, he began, and that's the way we get. We got two good eyes, two good, we got two good feet, we got an automobile, we got plenty of we got plenty of knowledge now, the word of God, glory to God, and we still find excuses. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. That's why as your pastor, I don't baby that is. No, come on. Y'all get mad if y'all want to. I, I you take a young convert, absolutely. I'll put them under my wing, and y'all better not mess with them. Come on. But them old, come on, them old folks. That's, that's said of it, been, been, been in the Lord. Hey, come on. Yes. In and out, up and down. Come on. Yes, sir. Yes. Come on. Yeah, I ain't getting no amens, but I'm going to tell you the truth anyway. It's come time on. that we just take another notch up the belt, yeah. suck it up, and let's yeah. live for God. Yeah. Let's come live on. for God or live for the devil, but you can't do both of them. Right. Yeah. Come on. Yeah. Hey, that's a good Sunday morning message right there. Yeah. Come on. Yeah. Glory to God. That's what's wrong with us. That's why them crackheads out there says they, they, they ain't no power in that church. Uh -huh. In fact, that dude was here, here the other day. He, uh, that crackhead might have said, I got them guys. I go, oh, yeah, I'm two of them. I sit there and drink beer. Come on, somebody. Uh -huh. You ain't got no power like that. Listen. The only power we need is the Holy Ghost power. Are yeah. oh, you still out there? Yeah. So I remember this message. You didn't put all that in there. That ain't my notes. I, I promise. Glory to God. I just felt like you needed that. Listen. Glory to God. Listen. 
We cannot possess a high place with men until we occupy a low place with God. Are you still out there? Yeah. 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 Join us while they're dangerous. <laughs> Amen. I said we cannot possess a high place with men until we occupy a low place with God. Think about it. We can't. Listen, Elijah, Elijah can't overcome Carmel until he surrenders to Cherith. And it's Cherith, the book Cherith, where the covenant's made. Come on. Oh, total dependence on God. There's, there's going to be a covenant right there. And when we get all grown up and think we got intellect now, we got the we got the tiger by the tail, and we know exactly what the Bible, all this good stuff, that's when, come on, that's when we find out we don't possess as much as we think we do. Come on, you're there. Now verse 4. And it shall come to it, it, it shall be that thou shalt drink of the brook. And I have commanded the ravens to feed thee there. We, we must learn that trusting. Everybody say that with me. Trusting trust. is a great treasure. Now say it like this. We must learn that trust in God is a great treasure. And until we learn to trust God, I don't know really if we can trust. If you can't trust God, who can you trust? I want to tell you, friend. He said, I'm going to use a raven. Now, I'm sure you and I would probably rather have an eagle than a raven. It's a big symbolic bird of freedom. And God's going to use an oversized crow. But you see, that's the part. Elijah's trusting God. Yes, sir. It don't matter how it comes. Come on. It don't matter who brings it. Yeah. Come on. Come on, this fool kid. If they are anointed, it don't matter who brings it. That's right. Come on, somebody. That's right. Glory to God. Amen. And listen, but we cannot. And you see, you've got to understand the whole principle behind what God was doing with Elijah now. There's going to come a day that Elijah's going to stand before all of Israel and say, How long halt you between two opinions? Yes. If, you, if you believe God, serve him. If you believe that if you believe the world God, which was Baal, serve him. That's right. But basically he said you can't serve them both. Right. right? And that was the sin of Israel at that time. They were trying to serve both of them. You, you know, Sunday morning is places they stand in room only this last Sunday. Come on, come on. Yeah. And, and and people said, Man, yeah, I'm trusting the Lord. But then they, they by Monday they just forgot everything what God was come on, somebody. Yeah, come on. Yeah. Listen, you got to learn to trust God. And I promise you, if we can learn to trust God, we'll eventually learn to trust God's people. Yes, sir. Yes, that's good. Yes, sir. See, Jake's, Jake's battling with his, with his neighbor. He, him and his neighbor have got big, tight buddies. But his neighbor's been burnt by religion so many times. Jake needs a roof on his, on his house now. Mr. Gary come over there. The neighbor come over there and said, he said, hey, Jay. And they talked for a minute. And he said, oh, they talked about the roof. He said, yeah, well, there was a storm come back a few, you know, how many years ago. And we, we both got paid for our roofs. There was a preacher living in that house at that time. And Mr. Gary said, all he's got, Jay said, sometimes you've got to get him turned, get him off on something else. Amen. But that neighbor watched that preacher. So when the, when the roof money come, that's back in the day when they just signed a check straight to you. Yeah. Well, was, the neighbor went got he got him a new roof. The preacher just put the money in his pocket, let her leak. Mm -hmm. Come come on. Yeah. So now we don't know what's fixing to happen. Amen. So when you pray at night, pray. Amen. The, 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 the adjuster's gonna come come out there and look at it, but he ain't telling nobody nothing. He's gotta get back and he said, they got you know how all that goes. Yeah. <laughs> but you see. We can leave a bad taste yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes. in a heathen's mouth. Yes. Yeah. They can lie on me. They can hate me. They can slander me. But if I never give them 
that open door, it's all lies. But the first time they can put a finger on you and accuse you of something and it's justified, you're sinning. Come on, we're in error. Glory to God. Amen. There's a lot of times we just like to come on, come on somebody. But we've got to hit our knees and say, come on. Oh, my God, somebody, y'all better help me here. Amen. And we just preach this one again Sunday. Glory to God. I'm going to say there's a lot of times, amen, I'd like to say, but God said, you better bite down until it bleeds. Come on. Amen. Because one word out of our mouth, amen, that's not ordained to the Spirit of God, can destroy people out there. Yes, sir. And listen, they're going to lie on you enough already. Yeah. 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 Come on. Well, they pass here now. Probably think we got some. Woo, look, we got some snake handers. <laughs> Come on, no, that, 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 that's that's some faith people. Yes, sir. Come on, that's right. If you say it, you believe God. You stand and believe God, right? Yes, Are you sir. still out there? Yes, sir. Hey, Thank cheer you. up. That was point number three, but I ain't got to the rest of the stuff. God, give me the answer. Hey, listen, we must learn that trusting God is a great treasure. You look, it's the trials of our faith. That proves our trust in God. Yes, sir. Did you get that? Oh, yeah. It's the trials of our faith that proves our trust in God. Amen. I want to tell you, nobody wants to go through the fiery trials. Nobody. It hurts. Amen. It, 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 it rocks you back at times. Uh, but you've got to learn. Amen. Pace yourself. You've got to take one step at a time. Uh, you've got to stay hidden with God. Amen. When these times come. Uh, because that's the proven ground. Amen. Uh, glory to God. Uh, the Bible said, hallelujah, that when, when, he, when uh, they were taken out of Egypt, uh, Moses brought them to the Red Sea. The first, the first travel stop was a place with bitter water. They had saw the water. They couldn't drink the water water. Amen. The Lord said, if you would just believe me and trust me, the Bible said, and there he proved them. He told them, he said, I'll put none of the diseases on you that I put on them Egyptians. But in those times of testing, you've got to pace yourself. You've got to come to a grinding halt. Sometimes you've got to throw your hands in the air, open your mouth and say, Lord, not my will, but your will be done. And in those times, God will come through can somebody shout amen? amen. This is life changing lessons. When the Lord, when the Lord put this on my heart to teach again, He said, How soon, speaking of the church, not the world, the church, how soon they forget. Yeah, yes, sir. No. Yes, sir. There's a whole there's a whole chapter in the book of Psalms dedicated with nothing but about forgetting God. Yeah. Yes, they get in bondage, they get in captivity, they get hungry, they get thirsty, they cry out to God. Yeah. After a while, God hears their cry, pours them out a blessing, right? Yeah. They get with God, they unite, they pray, they got camp meeting, and then after a while, guess what? They forget God. Right. It's a vicious cycle from Genesis 1 to the last word of Revelation. Yes. Yes, sir. And if that same vicious cycle lives today, yeah. Tell me I'm lying. Yeah. I wouldn't lie to you. You tell me I'm wrong. Amen. I'm not. You let things just go cushy and soft for us for a couple of weeks. Man, I'm going to get a raise at the, at the job. Everybody's a patting us on the back. My God. Everybody's a brag about how spiritual you are, huh? There ain't no pushing back. That devil seems like he's a million miles away from you. Everything just going, mm. Mama cooks the best favorite foods. Amen. You don't hear the Holy Ghost saying it's time to fast. None of that. And guess what happens? We get we get soft then. Huh? Well, come on. We'll forget. Glory to God. We'll forget where the battle's won. It's won at the altar. Glory to God. I said we'll forget. That's why God don't hate us. By He loves us enough to keep us in training. Huh? He loves us enough to keep us in shape. Glory to God. He knows that we don't allow the hand of that enemy to reach out for us. Huh? I didn't say the re thing was going to reach out and get you. My God, he reaches for us. But thank God there's a bloodline there. Glory to God. Oh, friend, listen. We must learn that trust in God is a great treasure. Glory to God. God, Listen, God's there is, is more significant than our here. See, there's a, there, there's, a, there's a location, a geographic location in so many places in this Bible. It's very key. A amen. But it wasn't the place that they wanted to be. It's the place that God told them to be. Yes, right? 
And that's always better, friend. That's always better. Amen. I said Cherith. The brook Cherith was God's command. Not Elijah's choice. Yes. Think about that. It was God's command. Not Elijah's choice. Ain't, uh, you, you say what you want. Ain't none of you here. Including me. That's going to say, oh yeah, God, 30 day fast. Woo, glory to God. Huh? Come on. Woo, glory to God. Oh, everybody's going to turn against me? Well, hallelujah, huh? You hope, you know, listen, David's own men hated him. Wanted to kill him. Come on, he didn't ask for none of that. But in the, in the heat of that moment, he didn't get mad. He didn't try to say back. He didn't try to get vindicated. He didn't throw his hands up and quit. He just sat down and encouraged himself in the Lord his God. Lord. And how did he do that? He got to remember. He put his own self back in the way of remembrance now of all the times he's been there before. I said Saul, he's, David's anointed of God. Amen. And Saul, hey, uh, it's called him to come play the harp. Amen. Because that demonic force that was on Saul would be soothed when David would play the harp, but it wasn't long. The harp playing wasn't enough. Now Saul's throwing javelins at him, baby. Why? But you know, all the times that David could have killed Saul three times in that wilderness, he could have killed. But he, David said, "No, no. He might not be anointed now, but he was God's man at one time. Come on, somebody. So leave him alone. Let me tell you. You said, well, wait, preacher. You tell us something. Let me tell you. I do tell you. And what I tell you is true. But some of them false doctrines out there, when they put that stuff in face book and they put that stuff on the World Wide Web and their TV programs and it's demonic. Some man of God needs to stand up and let the world, let the church know that that ain't right. Amen. Amen. That's, called being, that's called getting misled. Amen. Saul wasn't trying to mislead nobody. He was, he, he was, he was just he was beside himself now. He, didn't, he, he told him, I want him dead. Go hunt him down. Jonathan, his son, David and Jonathan was so close. That was Saul's son. He almost, he, he had to choose between his own blood, flesh and blood and, and, and David. That was a time. Jonathan would shoot that bow and arrow. Way out in that field because he had, a, he had a servant to go out there and fetch him arrows for him. Where he could commune with David. He'd shoot them arrows way out there. And he would kind of, there'd be a bush or something right there. David would be hid right there. Come on. He's hiding from Saul. Saul didn't make no attempt to try to hide his hatred and his jealousy. Yes, sir. Oh, dear God, I owe God's a prayer prayer. He's prepared one for us. Mm, he's prepared one for us. Hey, amen. But I want to tell you that's some other time. Listen, we're going to learn the we're going to learn these lessons around the dry brook tonight. Listen, now, now, verse number seven. Go back, look at it one more time. And it came to pass after a while that the brook dried up, not because God dropped the fireball. Not because God opened the earth up, but simply because there had been no rain in the land. Let it quit raining a few days out here. Yeah. You know, another, about a week ago, on our hill where the old clay is. And let it quit raining for a while. Where it was so wet, just weeks earlier, I have cracks yeah. all in the ground. It's just, that's just, that's nature. That, that's nature. So, so God had given me this... Uh, Whenever all this came to pass, it's been it's been a good while ago. But, but we must learn that God uses ordinary natural events to teach us supernatural principles. Yes, sir. I said, God, you, and then listen, guys. We all every hurricane, every fire in California, every thunderstorm, every this, every that, every tsunami across the ocean. We always think that's God's judgment, but it's not. If God wants something judged, remember, it's not going to be put back together. That's right. Right? Yeah. It's not going to be put back together. Now, God uses things to get people's attention. Yes. But let me tell you, God's got wait when, it, when judgment time comes, it's going to be more, it's going to be more than just a couple of riverboats in Biloxi and New Orleans get washed away. Come on. Yes, sir. Are, you, are you out there? Right. Listen. So, so so let me let me read this again. We must learn that God uses ordinary natural events. <laughs> To teach us supernatural principles. Now remember when Naaman dipped seven times in that natural river? Yes. It was one in rivers of Jordan. Amen. He gets mad. Now he believes the maid, his little hired servant, that there's a prophet in Israel. He makes the trip over there. 
But he gets mad when Elijah don't even come out and, and wave his hand and prophesy and say all these powerful words over him. So can we can, so can we come to, to, to believe that uh that really Naaman was a non-believer? You know? Oh listen, obedience to the word brings supernatural results. But here he just oh God, now in this is Elisha now. This is the, the prophet that took over after Elijah. And, and, and Naaman was Syrian, was a captain of the host, was a great warrior, but he was full of leprosy. And and and, and okay, well. The prophet could have anointed him with oil and healed him right there. But God's doing something deeper in that, in that old Syrian uh, 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 captain. He's trying to get him to understand that there ain't but one God in the world. And their gods ain't the one. Come on, somebody. So he, so he uses Elijah. Elijah sits in his house. Tell that, he tells his servant, Gehazi, he said, go out there and tell him to go be up seven times in that river. Woo, the muddy Jordan. Yes, I'm going to tell you there's times God makes us dip in the muddy Jordan. Yes, sir. The mind of that, of, that, of that captain, he said, I could go back. If I all this way, I'd go back to the house and dip in my clean rivers. They, ain't they better than the muddy Jordan? Come on. Ain't everybody, that, ain't that the what Timber says today? You know, everybody says, well, no, let me do it my way. It's a better way. No, that's just it. It's your way. It ain't God's way. Huh? But oh, my God. Uh, and listen, it was, it was his servant that said, sir. You're mad now. You're going back home, the same stinking leopard that you come over here with. If the man would have come out here and spoke some big words over you and maybe touched you or something, you would have surely done it. Ain't this easier just to go and obey? Yes. Well, you know what it translated what he said? He said, it's better to obey than to sacrifice. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. So he began to dip. And he dipped and he dipped and he saw no results to the which deal? The seven. Seven, a number of completion, right? Listen, I, I said this obedience to the word brings supernatural results. It was the natural that that the brook, it was natural that the brook would dry up here in, in, in King 17. Why? Because there's no rain. It don't take college education to figure that out. And all through the Bible, God used uh, the ordinary natural things, amen, to refine God's people to bring them to an understanding that they could believe the Lord. Glory to God. Uh, I want to tell you, he's got him situated at a, at a place called Cherith, uh, which is a, means in Hebrew covenant. Glory to God. Uh, he's going to hide himself there now. He's going to teach him. Uh, by the way, he even feeds him bread and, and, and come on now, and meat. Uh, one time, and in an evening, one time. There's not going to be any sweet potato pie. There's not going to be no fancy little... A Danny's here. It's going to be bread and meat. Lord, can you see the handwriting on the wall for the Lord Himself in Genesis, uh, in Exodus? Uh, he fed them the bread, and in John, He said, "I am the bread of life." Come on! Uh, and then Paul looked at the church and he rebuked them because they they were still on little baby milk. Uh, when he told them you should be on the meat of the word, you're still drinking a little milk. Glory to God, somebody. Listen, everything God done was with a purpose and a plan. If you ever read one day, one night, one evening, one morning, whenever, if you ever read and you come across places you just don't quite understand, I always wonder why it was you. That's when you need to just stop and begin to dig, begin yeah. to pray, begin to study, begin to pray, begin to study, and let God, because I want to tell you, this is God's word, friend. This is as live tonight as it's ever been alive, and he ain't got no secrets from us. He will open our understanding up to teach us his word. Glory to God. Oh, friend, listen now. Mm. At first, Naaman wasn't a believer. But how many knows when that leprosy fell? And he finally, it finally registered in his mind, it's better to obey than to sacrifice. Ooh, I'm a believer now, boy. He, you know, he, he goes back to that. Elisha, servant Gehazi, I tell him, I want to bless him. Oh, I want to bless him. Elisha, I don't want nothing you got. Come, come on. What's he saying? Elisha type of Christ saying, this world got nothing I need. Right. Yes, sir. Come on. So he asked him, he said, well, can I get me a couple of shovel loads of dirt? He said, because I, he said, I, 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 they'll cut my head off if they see me praying. And this is hard to understand. They, they'll cut my head off if they see me praying to, to the Jehovah God. 
But if I can get the soil and I'll kneel down and I'll pray to him every day. Come on. Come on, somebody. He said, absolutely. And all that's going on, he's riding off. Gehazi, this is another message another time. This is a good one right here. Gehazi, he said, sir, are you through with me? I've got something for me to take care of, Lord. Man of God said, yeah. Now remember, this is the type of Jesus Christ. Yeah. So he slips on out, boy, he takes off running. He runs that caravan down. He says, hang on, man, hang on. Because you see, Naaman's going to give him all kind of gold and silver and all this stuff. He saw, he, come on, he saw the blame, boy. <laughs> Amen. And, and a man of God said, I don't need nothing you got. Amen. Yeah. I got everything I need, right? Yeah. But in Gehazi, I had a different spirit. Yeah. And he run him down, and he said, the man of God, and then he lies. He said, the man of God changed his mind. Come on. Yeah. Woo, glory to God. Yeah. So they loaded him up. Boy, loaded him down with everything. He went and hid it. Hey, while all that's going on the other hill, on the, in the valley on the other side of the hill, the man of God seen it just like this. Right? Come on, somebody. You can't hide from God. Gaze out comes back in because it's about time to pour water on the man of God's hands, you know, and take care of him. Where you been, son? Oh, I've been nowhere. Just, just a little, little chores over here at the house. Come on, whatever he said. He said, oh, yeah, I saw. God says this. The leprosy that was on Haman is now it's on you. He turned away his snow. Dear God. Gehazi. When God gets suspicious. Oh my. Write it, brother. I'm going to preach it before you get a chance to. You go ahead and write it down. That's a good one right there, boy. Yes, indeed. When God gets suspicious. Yes, sir. Zachariah comes into that old Pentecostal church. Holy Ghost is moving. Three thousands done got saved. Man, they, the world hates them now, but signs and wonders are following. And oh, here they come. Brother Peter's up there. He's the pastor. Glory. Ain't you glad Peter's the pastor? Ain't going to be the gatekeeper in heaven? Yes, sir. Huh? He's the pastor now, full of the Holy Ghost. Here comes him. I said, the Holy Ghost got suspicious. He told a man of God what's going on. Another story, another time, but it didn't end well for him. Come on. They're, they're, oh, I, you know, we, we get a burial policy sometimes, life insurance for our spouses and stuff, but I don't know who got to spend that life insurance for both of them. Went to the ground. Come, come on. Amen. Let, let, let me hurry right here. Listen, natural, natural, not the supernatural provision that came to an end. The natural. Now the brook's going to dry. It's dry. There ain't no more ravens bringing them food in the morning and they're not coming in. Why? Because God's fixing to take him to the next chapter of his life now. Zarephath. Okay? Zarephath, meaning in the Hebrew refinery or to purge. To, you know why the preacher sometimes where it just get the word gets deep and it gets tight and it gets real close to you? It's a time of purging. A amen. Huh? There's, there's times, Sister Harry, I'll think something. I said, that, 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 ain't, that ain't no thought of God. That's carnality thinking that. Come on. I just wonder how God's going to, you know how we do sometimes. I just wonder how God's going to take care of that. You know, you ever been there? You know, they, they tell you you get diagnosed with this or you got this or some, a problem you got more going out there, come in, whatever it is, and we begin to wonder. I just wonder how God, and it's, let me tell you, friend, that's unbelief right there. That's what we've got to put, lock the brakes down right there and say, Forgive me, Lord. I don't know how you're going to do it, but I'm going to stand here and watch it come to pass. Come on, somebody. I want to tell you that sometimes to God, and sometimes God will just use something natural. Yes, sir. He owns a cattle on a thousand hill. He sells a cow. Guess what? Yeah. That's a natural. You go to sale. Go to cattle. So that's a natural thing. But when somebody's eat up terminal or, 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 or their back's against the wall and all of a sudden God just takes his hand and puts right there and it's a supernatural thing. Come on, somebody. Well, there's times we can get so discouraged that we let our minds run on. Come on, somebody. We can get so we can get so discouraged and, and every now, all of a sudden, the devil's got us where he wants us. So, so Sister Harriet, the way she looked at me, I, oh, oh, do what devil? She's mad at me. What am I going to do? Hey, come on, somebody. 
You know how that old adversary does. Come on. Uh, Lord. Man, I'm going to tell you, I walked right by Brother Alice. He never even checked up. Uh, he had to chase me. Thank you for chasing me down, brother. I said my head's running faster than my feet. Uh, glory to God. Uh, I'm going to tell you, that's what we got to do right there. Hey, 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 brother, how are you? Oh, I'm good, brother. I'm so sorry. Come on, somebody. Uh, oh, hallelujah. Sometimes uh, we, if we're not careful. Uh, with our looks, we'll be out there. We'll be staring. Uh, almost trying to see God sitting on the throne. Come on. Uh, and everybody around us is like, why is he mad? Come on. Why is he mad? Uh, what's wrong with him? Come on, somebody help me up here. I want, he must have had a bad day. And all of a sudden, because our minds don't understand, and we give place to the devil before long now. Oh, come on. You know how it is. You know how it is. That's why we can just be, our minds be stayed upon the Lord. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Huh? Glory to God. Brother Dennis Rains, a great friend of mine, come through Team Challenge. He was a drug addict. Could have played football for big, big teams. He chose dope instead. He went through so many drug rehabs, failed every one of them. They finally talked him into doing a Team Challenge. He got saved and full of the Holy Ghost. Brother Glenn, Brother Glenn will be here the first week of July. He tells the story. He was one of the mentors. I was one of them. But Brother Glenn was on site with him a lot. He was one of them. And, and, uh, and they passed them, uh, passed them through the food line. You know, they only give them a certain amount and stuff. Well, that, that morning, I guess somebody decided to bless him. They put three eggs on, brother, uh, on Brother's plate. And he, he went, oh, dear God. He turned and looked at Brother Glenn. He said, Brother Glenn, I wonder what this means. So it looks like it means you got three eggs on your plate, but it ain't either. We try to over spiritualize things at times. Come on, somebody. Glory to God. Oh, I put somebody said I put my left my left shoe on before my right shoe tonight. I wonder, I wonder what that means. <laughs> Come on. You know, I want to tell you, these Pentecostals is the worst works for that, too. Man, they, listen, the charismatics, man, they, they'll prophesy, they'll look at that exit sign and try to get to prophesy. Come, come, come on, somebody. That just simply means if you need to go out, there's a good place to go right there. Come on now. Listen, life-changing lessons around the dried-up brook. I said, when, the, when it quits raining, it's going to get dry. I preached the old evangelist in me when I was on the evangelistic trail. I, I preached that message basically out of right here, but it was entitled, It's Going to Get Dry. Amen. Yes, when God, and there's times, now listen to this, you, 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 you might want to write this down to remind yourself of when it happens, uh, but sometimes God turns the, the nozzle off. Glory to God. He don't just he don't just turn it a little slower where the water don't come out as, as strong, but He turns it off. Uh, it's almost like He takes a big old pipe wrench and tightens it down. Uh, it ain't going to be one drop now. Come back. Come on, somebody. You know what I'm talking about. Them times when your life seems so dry. It yeah. seems like you read the Bible when you can't even make heads or tails. Uh, you pray and it don't seem like your prayers. Uh, can I tell you it's got to be like that? Uh, because every time you prayed uh, and the thunder would roll, uh, every time you spoke uh, and everybody would, I want to tell you, then you think you caused it. Uh, so God said, i got to let it get dry. If I'm going to move this man on yeah. to perfection, uh, he'll sit here to his bones grow old. If I keep feeding him here. Yeah. Got to dry it up. I gotta get him to Zarephath. Yes. He ain't he, he, he needs to be refined because one day he's gotta stand and look at all Israel by himself. Nobody's gonna help him. Come on. Come on, somebody. So he said, So I'm, gonna, I'm just gonna dry it up. And the day came. He watched it for a long time. The brook got smaller and smaller and smaller. And after a while that was it. There was no more water. But that's that's the beauty of this. It came to pass after a while that the brook dried up because there had not been any more rain in the land. And the next verse, I don't know if it was an hour, a day, a week, or a month, but it could have been a month unless he had a big ample uh, supply of water. But it's like this. And the word of the Lord came at him saying, Arise, get thee. Come on. Yeah. It's time. What, basically, he said, It's time to move now. Yeah. Come on. It's time to move. you got to go to Zarephath now. Look, glory to God. I'm almost done here. I'm almost done. But listen now. Obedience to the Word. That's why, listen, the Word of God is, it should be the most treasured thing you have in your life. Yes, sir. Now, in your, in, your time, in your place with God, your prayer life. Yes. 
But when you begin to pray and read the word of God and God opens his word of God up to you and gives you the understanding, the knowledge, come on somebody. And not only the knowledge, but the wisdom and know how to perform it. Yes, sir. Hey, knowledge, knowledge without any wisdom, it, it, come on somebody, it's dangerous. Woo, zeal. I want to tell you, we get a lot of knowledge sometimes, but we don't, have, we don't know how to use it. But glory to God. I want to tell you, that can become dangerous. So listen now. I said, the, the ravens didn't fail. The barrel of meal in Elisha's day didn't fail. The fiery caramel didn't fail. Amen. Them three things right there were supernatural. None of them failed. But God said it ain't going to rain. And it's just as plain as, a, as your hand in front of your face. Things are going to get dry now. Right? Listen. All through Scripture, God would, would intervene supernaturally during natural events and calamity. And I need you to get that tonight. All through Scripture, God would, you, would intervene supernaturally during natural events and calamity. Think about that. There's a Red Sea in front of Moses and in that 1.5 million or after how many people there, there was, a large group of people. It's natural that a Red Sea and they're going to cross. No, they, 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 they're dead in the water. There's mountains on both sides of them and the Egyptian army coming up behind them. But it takes a supernatural manifestation of God. Come on, somebody. Amen. And that was no greater, but it was no less than what God told them. When the Lord himself told them, go to Jerusalem and tarry. Wait to be endued with power from on high. He's had an upper room there. They gathered in it. Glory to God. And they waited. Amen. A, a natural event. They would just obey the word. But it wasn't natural what happened when they all got one mind and one accord. It got supernatural when God himself poured his spirit out upon every one of them. Think about it. 120 now. Brother Al Siha, all in the same mindset. All got the same desire. Brother Chris all now speaking the same word. Going the same direction. Loving the same Jesus. Come on somebody. I'm going to tell you don't get no greater than that. And ever since that one supernatural event we've been trying to get back there ever since. Yes, sir. Ever since we've been trying to get back right there. Glory to God. Come close a few times. Some of the great moves of God in church history have been close a few times. But I want to tell you, it takes something to get unified. Watch this. It takes something to get unified with God. Yes, sir. It takes even greater acts to get unified with each other. Yes, sir. Woo! Right. Walk and call and off and call right there. Dear God. I want to tell you, I said it takes something to get unified with God, but it takes a greater act to get unified with each other. Yes, oh, glory to God. Hallelujah. She said, I think I'm going to heat me up some of that vegetable soup. That's what she said. I said, well, you go for it. As long as you don't make me eat none of it. <laughs> Oh, that thing's full of green peas and carrots. Ah, I said the devil is a liar. Come on. But we got, we got different stuff. Come on. Now, but it ain't like she said, well, well, Big Daddy, go get you some cereal. So no, no, she wouldn't do that. She'd fix me whatever I wanted, right? And we'll get on, we'll get on, on, on that later on. Glory to God. I'm going to leave that alone tonight. Amen. Oh, no. Oh, glory to God. My God, my God. I mean, oh, I mean, that, that, that fish, that, that big old brown now, it's lit up with fish, catchable fish right there. Glory to God. So I ain't going to throw that. We're going to move on. I want to tell you everything. There's a, there's a proper order with God. You hear me? Yes, sir. As God takes care of us, we take care of each other. Yes. And I'm not just talking about husband and wife. I'm talking about the body of Christ. Yes, sir. We, we, the, we the family of God, guys. Yes, you get all boo-hoo and you get all sideways with the world. Don't appreciate your don't this and don't that. We the body of Christ. We gotta love each other. Yes, and I don't want to do it because of God too. That's right. Help me somebody. I don't want to do it. I don't, I don't want to love Brother Dave just because the Bible said I'm better. Come on. I love him because we got the same Jesus. Come yes, on. Sir. And we fire each other, right? Yeah. At times, we might not see things eye to eye. Come on. But if we could ever get into a place, glory to God, I'm going to say this, we won't quit. But if we could ever get into a place where the whole body of Christ would get in one mind. Yes, yes sir. Yes. Come on. Yeah, we were feeling that little pushback tonight when yes. things first started. 
Yeah. Huh? Heard Sister Dale up there and they started about, you know, plead the blood. Go ahead. Go ahead now. Glory to God. But it's all right. Well, so what are we going to do? We're going to do what we did. Just, just begin to pray and worship God. Yes, Tell you begin to pray and worship God and bind that old thing. He can't come on somebody. You don't just mark one down. When we come tonight, I guess he would know he ain't never going to be greater than the Lord. Come on. He ain't never going to be greater than the church of the Lord. Yes, come on. Glory to God. Amen. Oh, yes, sir. I said, that's just one of the little things. Just, look, just something comes through here, you know. That's, that's his job. I, I pastored somebody who couldn't keep victory. I ain't going to tell you where, but it wasn't here. Uh, but he couldn't keep victory three days in a row. He's always boo-hoo and crying about why the devil's doing him this and why the devil's doing it. I said, because he's a devil. That's right. That's right. I guess he was thinking I was going to pull him out in some kind of big, great, miraculous word. He is the devil. Yes, huh? That's what the devil does. That's what Jesus said. He come to steal, kill, and destroy. That's what he's going to do. Yes. Glory to God, man, I want to tell you. And that's what I told that guy. I, I said, man, just love Jesus. Right? right? Man, I ain't going to share the testimony I've already heard, but I'm going to tell you it blessed my Oh, my God, oh, my God. I want to tell you, God's people, we're going to have the upper hand. Because, you see, God's for his people, friend. And it's the blood of Jesus. Come on, somebody. Glory to God. I told you it was going to quit. So one of you, somebody might want to move this away or I'm going to change my mind. Glory to God. But listen, it's the natural, not the supernatural provision that came to an end. Supernatural events begin. Now I want you to get this. You just write notes. This is one thing God told me this morning. Supernatural events begin when committed obedience is followed. Yes, sir. Now, you said, but wait, you, you got followed in the wrong place. No, I don't, because that's kind of what first thing come to my mind. I said, that's almost a play on words. He said, no, it ain't. Listen to it. When committed obedience is followed, I'm following that obedience that's leading me, guiding me now. Come on, yeah. somebody. Right. Come on, you getting it now? Yeah. Amen. Yeah. Because you've got to understand there's two persons in you. There's two yeah. natures in you. There's a newborn again. Yeah. Come on. And you still got an old nature that lives in you. Are you, are you with me now? And there's times the old nature, oh, come on, God. And sometimes we don't, he gotta, that's why he's got to stay dead. We've got to keep him crucified. Glory to God. And sometimes that thing rises up and it tries to miss it. But if you keep him crucified, now you can follow the unction of the Spirit of God that's in you. Come on. That's what walking in the Spirit's all about. Hallelujah. I said, that's what's walking in the Spirit. It's all, I'm, I'm walking now, but it's my steps, but it's not my, come on, somebody. Yes, sir. It's oh. an unction of one greater than I. Yes, sir. Hallelujah. I'm going to read that one more time. Man, I tell you, I just got, man, I just, Lord, yes, I love you. Jesus, yes. I love you. Supernatural events begin when committed obedience Committed obedience. Yes, sir. You gotta commit to obeying God. Hello. Yes, sir. Come on. I think that's a, I think that's a real problem in the, in the Pentecostal church today. Man, I, I don't. We don't use that term here, but but some Pentecostals they use the church in church out of church. Yes. I don't use that. I don't. Want, I really wish you don't use that either. Right. Amen. In church out of church. What What do you mean? Oh, that's right. Church become a revolving door. Yes. We come barely at the altar. We get our little fix and we go back out. Come on, come on. Come on. And then two weeks you ain't seen nobody. And they, and they use that term. Well, he's out of church now. Right. You know what I told him Pentecostals? They're mean Pentecostals. They've got some mean Pentecostals out there. Yeah. Yeah. I told him mean Pentecostals. I said, that's your problem right there. You get out of church. But you really just never got in Christ. Yes, sir. They want to fight then, boy. Yes, sir. They'll jump on you like a pack of dogs. Yeah, they will. I said, that's your problem right there. You never got... When you get in Christ, yes, sir. you become the church. Hallelujah. Oh, I'm supposed to call you right now. Hallelujah. Look, stand to your feet with me tonight. Supernatural Events began when committed. I com Would somebody tell me tonight, just say to the Lord, I commit myself to obey you. Oh, Hallelujah. All through Scripture, 
God would intervene supernaturally during natural events and calamity. From the Red Sea to the wedding of Cana to the tomb of Bethany. I said transformation from natural to supernatural. Dear God, the greatest, the greatest was Calvary. When the man Jesus, don't, don't confuse that now. Don't get confused with not the Lord, the man Jesus. Yes, sir. Oh, he's all God. Yes. But he's got to be all man when he takes our sins to come on somebody. Yes, sir. He's a lamb without spot or wrinkle. If he's only in the deity of God at that time, then it almost cancels out any opportunity and hope that we can succeed on this earth. Yes, sir. See, sir. People don't understand it because when, at times you get taught wrong. I, 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 hey, don't, I'm just telling you. you. You get taught wrong. But I'm telling you, if he's nothing, he's man now. He's the person. The man Jesus is going to show you and I'm going to show the disciples how to live victorious. Oh, yeah, he, he heals some blinded eyes. Come on, somebody. What? Well, I'm fixing to say something here. I said he walks on water. Come on. He, he, he calls demons out of people. Well, if he's a man, he's full of the Holy Ghost. He's full of the Holy Ghost. In the rabbit, in the river of baptism, the, the old muddy Jordan. Come on. When John the Baptist was baptizing, he stops and he says, Behold, the Lamb of God. Now wait a minute. Wait a minute. He's a he's a cousin of, of John, but it, it don't say that they sit there and play it all through childhood. How do you know? The Holy Ghost. Yeah. Because John was baptized in the womb of Elizabeth before he ever even come. Come on, somebody. That's why I'm telling you, you need to be full of the Holy Ghost. And, and when we talk to, about Christ like that, we take nothing away from the deity of the Godhead. Yes, sir. Because He is all God. Yes. yes. But when He is on that cross, and He cries out, Father, forgive them, for they don't know what they do. And they take His limp, dead body, and they put it in a barn tomb. And the Bible said, now, before He ascends come on yeah. he descended yes. I told a guy this the other day see there ain't no place called purgatory no more yes, I talk to Catholic people about this all the time there was a place called a holy it's purgatory yeah. but it's no more yeah. because Jesus led captivity captive yes. everybody that was ever been was in that place of holding I mean can you imagine when the Lord walked into that place and there's Abraham Isaac Jacob yeah. And he looked at Abraham, glory to God. Hey, come on. And he began to talk to him and preach, and I am the way, the truth, yeah. and the life. Are you still with me here? Yeah, yes, I am, come on. I am the great I am, Moses. Come on, somebody. Because he was the burning bush in the time of Moses. He was, he was the the the, the the spirit that walked between uh, that covenant that God was making uh, as a smoking flax. Glory to God. Yeah. When Abraham done all he could do, uh, he's got to get out of the way in the presence of Almighty yeah. God. He's going to secure the covenant. Yeah. And everybody that believed, they didn't have to understand. They didn't have to be able to quote scriptures. All they had to do is believe. Yes, sir. And he let them out. That's why Matthew... They saw them people been dead for a long time ago. They saw them back in the streets. Yes, sir. Some calls it the first resurrection. You call it what you want to. But there was an awakening of the dead. Because uh -huh. yeah. there was in a place of holding. Yeah. They weren't in hell. Glory to God. They were in holding. Yeah. But they, and I don't even know if, if, if purgatory or, or what it was a place of holding. Glory to God. But Isaiah saw it. And he writes this. Hell enlarged herself. Yes. Because everybody that did not believe, all that place of holy crumbled into hell. Mm -hmm. Come on, somebody. Yes, sir. Now, people don't like you getting doctrinal like that because, watch this now. 
Because, well, we, we all got loved ones that may be, come on, somebody. Well, that means you need to get a little bit more busy. Come on, come on. Yeah. Come on, somebody. Yeah. We need to get busy, don't yeah. yeah. Not to try. Listen, I don't ever minister to people to prove people wrong. No, sir. But I study all other doctrines out there to let them, because everybody believes, Brother Alice, everybody believes something. Yeah. And atheists believe something. Yeah. Amen. But if we can learn what why the mindset's like this. And we can bring the, the Holy Ghost, the whole bread of life, and be with them a table from the Lord. I'm telling you, there's still people out there that loves Jesus, friend. Yes, and don't you confuse this pastor to say, well, he's saying all Catholics is going to... I'm not saying nothing of the... None of that. That ain't my position. My position is to preach you the right word of God. Yes, sir. Ain't, ain't no way I'm fixing to ever stand and say them Methodists and Baptists and all that. I've heard them idiots do all that. They, they, they got no sense. They ain't God. Amen. And I don't want to see nobody in hell. No, sir. I want to see people. I got saved in the back of Vic Baptist Church. I keep pointing that away. But in Vic Baptist Church, that's where that door was. Come on, somebody. Yes, sir. I'm not ashamed of my roots. I don't believe in Baptist folks. I said, I, I said, and God visited me one day, and I, and I asked questions, and I believe the report of the Lord, Brother Lamb. Yes. Come on. Now, I read on there, this life's not my own. I've been, I live the life of another. So, Sister Victoria, I begin to pray, God, He's got the call of God on me. I'm full of the Spirit of God. He's calling me now, now to, to, to leave what my surroundings and follow him and I said God if you will open the door I'll go through it come on somebody yeah. I ain't looking to go to just to preach to a Pentecostal church come on I don't have just on a back I'm going to open the door God yeah. and I found myself under tents yeah. I found myself in, in home meetings I found myself in the back side of an old come on an old liquor store come on have, having some meetings in the back room uh, and seeing people uh, fall out under the power of God come on now I said God led me all the way to the border down to Mexico uh, I've been in two other different foreign countries uh, I've been most uh, so a lot of places in the United States preaching I didn't ask them when they come in do you, do you believe this do you, are you this or you that no no that's all God's business yeah. If we would quit trying to secularize everything and categorize everything, you ain't got you ain't got the right uh, the form in your mind. If you look at a person and say, "Well, there ain't no help for them," because you forgot what you look like to somebody else. Come on, staggering. Come on, somebody. I want to tell you where there's a wheel, there's a way. I want to see. I want to see the days come back that they stagger in, intoxicated, yes. doped up out of their mind, yes. and stagger to self fall into the wall. Yes. An altar of grace, yes, sir. <laughs> and jump up sober as me and Brother Larry yes. is tonight. Come on, yes. huh? Come on, become pillars of the church. Yes, yes sir. Yes. 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 Don't give up on me, Brother John. I'm coming. <laughs> He just in, he set the mood. I want to tell you that I just love that. Glory to God. Listen, God's trying to teach us lessons daily. Yes, Amen. sir. Praise God. You and yourself. Let me help you for one second. You and yourself are gonna go through dry times, and the devil's gonna tell you God's mad at you. No. The devil's gonna say God can't use you. But I want to tell you, you know, you know. That when that ground out there gets dry, it's ready to receive. Yes, yes sir. And even when the rain first starts, it's got to, it's got to, it's got to soften it up. Come on. Yeah. But after a while, that ground gets softened up, and then that water gets on down there, and where it was nothing but drought, now there's green. Yes. We left, we left that little church in Mexico one night after we preached, and in the distance, that light was just. The people at that church that's supposed to rain. And we got to cross two dry riverbeds. It rains like it floods out. You're going to come in or out. We went back now. We went down there to that place. It's dry. It's in, everything in that desert is brown as that, that wall right there. Ain't nothing. Got no color. Everything just looks barren and dead. It rained that night in that desert. 
we went back the next evening for church and we didn't even recognize where we were at. Everything was so green and lush. There was red flowers all on them, some of them cactus and man, all them beautiful flowers. One rain. Say that with me. One rain. One rain. It's all it's going to take for you and I to yes. blossom. Yes, sir. But in our droughts, that's the time not to give up. Amen. That's the time to pursue. Oh, but the devil said, but you failed God. Well, we just tell him he's a liar. Yes, and guess what? I told somebody the other day, I said, you know what? We keep pretty good company. Moses was a murderer. Abraham was a liar. King David was an adulterer. Come on. Yes, Should I keep on? Huh? Yeah. Every one of us has sinned and fell short of the glory of God. Yes, sir. And Brother Greg, ain't we glad that the Lord said, I still got a use for him. Come on. Yes, sir. I still got a use for him. I ask you tonight, has anybody tonight could just say, I learned a lesson yeah. in this place tonight. Yeah. The Lord has helped me. Glory to God. Well, let's build an altar. Let's find